Sergio Motti, welcome to Bloomberg. Your final set of results after nine years at UBS and the best in a decade across the business. So talk us through, where was the standout performance in this quarter? Well, I'm very happy with those results and particularly uh, by the fact that uh, all business uh, units have contributed. Uh, of course, we had uh, the best uh, third quarter since 2011 in wealth management, uh, being up uh, 18%, uh, but also the IB uh, uh, was up uh, across the board in markets, in, uh, in the investment banking part. Uh, asset management also had a very strong performance. Even our Swiss business, which is under pressure a little bit from a transaction uh, uh, fee standpoint of view, has been able to uh, grow. Uh, and uh, overall, also the fact that we have been working hard on costs has created this operating leverage. Was it a perfect storm of, of, of volatility really that helped you up in the third quarter? Well, look, you know, no, volatility has, uh, if anything, uh, has been coming down to a more normalized levels that we maybe saw before 2018 and 19. I think that the merit here is a, a combination of uh, as a more stable uh, market environment, but also the effect of all, new, all the new initiatives that we put uh, at for growing and, uh, and which are starting to pay off. You've got a strong message in the dividend uh, in the release. There's an accrual of cash. There's an accrual for buyback. What does that say to the investors, Sergio? And when can we realistically expect the regulator to let you, uh, UBS pay those dividends in 2021? Well, what it's in for investors is uh, uh, um, basically our message that we are uh, very determined and uh, committed uh, in, uh, in, uh, in implementing our capital return policy. So I think that we have, we have uh, been uh, flashing our intentions to uh, have a good, uh, solid cash dividend, but also complemented with share buybacks. And the fact that we are highlighting uh, what we would have done so far this year to, uh, by creating this 1.5 billion reserve is uh, uh, a testament, testament of our commitment. So in respect of timing, I think that uh, uh, we uh, is not realistic at this stage considering uh, the overall regulatory environment uh, and, and uh, restrictions uh, worldwide uh, to uh, see some things uh, until the early part of 2021. Okay, so early 2021. The other message that, that I saw, you talk about markedly low loss provisions. Jamie Dimon says he's either 10 billion over provisioned or 20 billion under provisioned. Now, I know you'll say I've got higher quali high quality assets, but is the risk to loan provisioning skewed to the upside going into 2021 with a COVID backdrop? Well, I think that uh, yeah, uh, our exposure to credit uh, markets is uh, contained. This is one of the features of our strategy, which has been uh, paying off over the years, giving us uh, very high returns on, uh, on regulatory capital. But particularly, uh, if you take in consideration the last few months, uh, we have been demonstrating that. Going forward, I do not expect uh, any meaningful uh, um, uh, increase of loan loss provisions uh, unless there is a huge dramatic uh, downturn on, in the economies. And in any case, uh, all those provisions would be model driven. So as you could see in, in our uh, third quarter results, uh, we have a very modest uh, level um, stage three uh, provisions and we are very confident about the quality of our credit book. I listened to commentary from Corroda from Bailey and from Lagarde. Kuroda's worried actually about all outright recession again in Japan, double dip risk. Are you concerned about a W narrative, a deeper recession coming again on the back of this COVID narrative, Sergio? Well, look, we have to be concerned about uh, many items uh, that are out there. Uh, the, the situation from a macroeconomic geopolitical standpoint of view is still very uh, uh, uncertain. And uh, so we are prepared for, for any scenario. We believe that we have been demonstrating over the years and we will do uh, also going forward our ability to navigate all those challenges and still deliver strong results for shareholders. You said that what an individual bank does, but also what its competitors do in regards to mergers and acquisition. It's not what an individual bank does, but it's what the competitors do. As you leave UBS, is UBS in prime position, pole position, to take part in M&A if it comes? Do they have the license to do a deal if they need to? 
Well, I think it's always inappropriate uh, to talk about M&A, his own M&A, its own M&A in public, and, uh, and for sure for somebody about to leave the firm, I'm not going to enter into that debate. Uh, I think that in general, I think that uh, uh, scale and, and uh, focus scales uh, that uh, can offset uh, the headwinds of uh, uh, regulatory costs, technology costs, could help. Uh, I think as far as uh, UBS is concerned, uh, we have plenty of uh, room for, uh, to grow organically. And uh, of course, we, uh, uh, the con competitive landscape is very uh, intense, and therefore we will need to watch uh, exactly what's going on. If the regulators stymie dividend payments, if, if they stymie dividend payments further than you and I think at this moment in time, does that push the M&A narrative for banks in Europe and Switzerland higher on the agenda? Well, I think that, uh, first of all, I think that over time we, uh, we do believe that we will start to see a differentiation between banks uh, that uh, are uh, able to do that and, uh, and the one that uh, are probably still uh, trying, reinforcing their capital position or redefining their strategy. Uh, in general, I think that uh, the point you raise is a, 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 essentially a valid one. I think that uh, we should not uh, have a, a system that is, des you know, is de facto forcing uh, uh, banks and financial institutions to use excess capital for M&A just because they can't return it to shareholders. In nine years, you built capital and you paid out over 20 billion in dividends, Sergio. With that in mind, as you leave, do you think that the market really justly rewarded you for the dividend and capital build story that you delivered? Well, I think I have a lot of respect for the markets, and the markets is the market. But I think that with inside, inside, I would say that uh, maybe if I could go back, I would probably uh, propose to balance more uh, capital returns between uh, a cash dividend and share buyback. Uh, since, uh, you know, uh, shareholders comes in and goes and uh, the one that have been staying around uh, for, you know, nine years uh, do, do remember that they got uh, five francs of dividends, the other, you know, uh, less so. But I think what's important is the facts and that going forward we will continue to uh, deliver strong uh, returns to our shareholders by executing uh, uh, our, our strategy. Part of that execution is handed over to Iqbal Khan. He joined you a number of months ago. Is he lending more? What, what is the truth of Iqbal Khan, wealth management, UBS are leveraging more, lending more? Are you? Is Iqbal's wealth management division lending more and taking more leverage? Uh, well, actually, uh, Iqbal is part of the team, uh, has been a valid addition, a very uh, strong a valid addition to the team. But uh, uh, him and Tom Narratil are a perfect couple. Uh, when you look at lending, we had uh, more than 10 billion of lending at this quarter. And uh, the, the strong performance was coming from the Americas and not uh, from uh, the areas where Iqbal is more involved on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, lending is a strategic uh, um, uh, priority for uh, UBS and not for a single person or a single segment of uh, our business. So lovely interview with the FT, by the way. Uh, and in that you say, my best decision was not to follow consensus. What is your non-consensus trade as you go out the door? We've talked a couple of times. You like credit in the hurly-burly. What is the non-consensus or multi-trade as you leave? <laughs> that's, uh, that's quite uh, difficult to say, but I would say that I, in, this, in this environment, although it's very painful to hold cash, I think having a, a good, uh, you know, having, being ready to invest uh, uh, if there is a downturn, uh, I think it's uh, very important. And just give me a sense uh, of global risk. Bank of America's narrative was that we're getting a bit greedy. Do you think markets look rich, look greedy in terms of credit spreads compression, equity markets rising? Is there a sense of greed in these markets, Sergio? Well, I don't think it's greediness, uh, to be honest. I think that uh, we all know the uh, liquidity and, and the money has to go somewhere. And it's almost inevitable that, uh, you know, this huge uh, float of uh, liquidity and uh, money uh, in the market is, is creating asset inflation. We have been seeing that for a while. Uh, and, uh, you know, in, in that sense, uh, what I mentioned before, we have to be balanced and diversified in the way we look at the market right now. 
Uh, there will be opportunities. There are opportunities, but one has to be uh, very selective and also well diversified to navigate this kind of environments. So we've done a lot of these quarterly interviews. Uh, I seem to be asking the same questions, and you seem to look the same, the same kind of age. I think it's been better to you than to me. What, we, what, we, what was your biggest achievement? We've done a lot of these quarterly reports. What was, what was the biggest achievement for you, Sergio, in these nine years? Well, my biggest achievements, I mean, I think that uh, I, I, I already mentioned it maybe uh, publicly, but I think it's still <laughs> valid. And uh, it's not necessarily everything I did with, uh, with my team here and, and all the people at UBS have been fantastic in supporting me and, and the team to uh, turn around the firm. I'm very proud that 86% uh, of, uh, you know, the employees of UBS uh, uh, feel proud about for this organization, something that is quite dramatically, uh, uh, has quite dramatically changed compared to nine, ten years ago.